Welcome to ankle replacement class. My name is Kiki McKissick and I'm the orthopedic coordinator with the UT Advanced Orthopedic Center. And today I will be talking to you about your ankle replacement. Our goals for the class are to help you prepare for your surgery, give an overview of your hospital stay, help plan your recovery, and to ease your anxiety. Now let's talk about preparing your home before your surgery. Put things you use often within easy reach. Add pillows to any low chairs. This will make it easier to get up out of the chair. Move furniture out of the way so there is enough room to move around with a walker or a wheelchair. Pack away throw rugs and move any cores or other obstacles on the floor so you don't trip on them. Use a bag or a basket to carry things from place to place as you move around with your walker or your wheelchair. Here are some bathroom tips. Prevent slips and falls by installing rails and non-slip surfaces. Check existing grab bars for strength and stability and repair if needed. You and your therapist may discuss ways to raise the height of your toilet seat. Make bathing easier by using a shower hose, liquid soap, a long handle sponge, a bath bench or shower chair without a back. Watch out for hazards such as wet floors. Dry off in the shower to prevent bringing water out onto the floor. Stock up on toiletries and other items you will need to use during your recovery. You may require assistance with special equipment at home. This equipment is not covered by your insurance, so you are encouraged to explore options when buying equipment. Equipment can be purchased at retailers such as Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Amazon.com, Home Depot, or at Lowe's. As you prepare for your surgery, keep in mind you will not be driving until given permission by your orthopedic surgeon. Have pillows in your car to pad the heel of your foot and to elevate your foot after surgery. Make transportation arrangements for all follow-up appointments. Think about your home medications and get refills before you run out. Think about your meal planning. Make meals ahead of time that you can freeze and reheat. Medical clearance. Pre-anesthesia testing is a requirement before surgery. It is a medical clearance process provided by UT Medical Center to assess patients before they undergo anesthesia. During your pre-anesthesia testing appointment, you will be asked a series of questions regarding your procedure, your medical history, and your home medications. Now let's discuss some ways to prevent surgical site infection. Ways that we prevent surgical site infection is by use of alcohol-containing antiseptic agent for preoperative skin preparation, cleansing with the CHG soap three times prior to your surgery, we also give IV antibiotics before, during, and after your surgery. And you will also receive a nasal antiseptic swab in a preoperative area. To reduce the risk of infection, we provide a nasal swab to every patient on the day of surgery in the preoperative area. This swab is an antiseptic that will decolonize bacteria to decrease your chances of infection in your new joint. The 3M nasal swab is used to treat Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a bacteria that can cause skin infections and potential infections in the bloodstream, bones, and joints. This bacteria is commonly known as MRSA. Approximately 30% of the populations are carriers, or MRSA, and is carried in the nares or your nostrils or on your skin. This bacteria can remain solid and never cause infections, but patients who are carriers of Staph aureus are at a higher risk of developing a surgical site infection. So, if you have had a MRSA infection within the last two years, it is very important to let your surgeon know. Your surgeon would need to order certain antibiotics for you the day of surgery if you had had MRSA within the last two years. Cleansing with the CHG soap. 
Studies show that cleansing with the CHG soap reduces the number of bacteria on your skin that could lead to surgical site infection. Studies suggest that patients may benefit from cleaning with the CHG soap for at least three days before surgery. It is very important that you receive the CHG soap and use it. Start using the CHG soap two nights before surgery and the morning of. First, wash your hair and your body using your regular shampoo or soap. Rinse it off. Turn away from the flowing water. Apply the CHG soap to your washcloth or sponge and you will bathe from the neck down. Avoid your face and avoid your private area. Gently scrub your surgical area with the CHG soap for an extra three minutes. Rinse off with warm water and always apply dry, clean clothes. Before surgery, it is important to stop taking any medication that can increase bleeding during surgery or cause low blood pressure after surgery. So we do have a do not list. No blood thinners for seven days before surgery. Do not shave your legs five days before surgery. Do not wear lotions patterns, or deodorants on the day of surgery. What to bring to the hospital? Most patients are only here one night. Consider comfortable clothing, such as loose pants or shorts, shoes with closed heels, any toiletries that you may need, and bring your CPAP machine if you use a CPAP at bedtime. Write down the settings for your CPAP and bring your joint replacement guidebook with you to the hospital. The night before surgery, you may be a little anxious, so try to rest as much as you can. Eat a decent supper. Take your nightly medications that you are instructed to take by pre-anesthesia testing. Take a shower with the CHG soap. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight unless otherwise instructed by PAT, and this is for your safety. On the day of surgery, you'll take another shower using the CHG soap. Only take your medications you are instructed to take by pre-anesthesia testing with a small sip of water. Most patients are only at the hospital for a few hours, so wear comfortable, loose clothing. Do not wear makeup, fingernail, or toenail polish, no contacts, no jewelry. Do not bring any valuables and do not bring your home medications. Arrival to UT Medical Center, you will park in parking garage H. Please do not park in spaces designated as advanced orthopedic center parking, as these are for patients office appointments only. Arrive at the hospital at the time you were assigned. Go through the Fountain Circle main entrance to patient registration. You will be registered for surgery, go over forms, and receive an ID bracelet. In the preoperative area, you will hand over your glasses, hearing aids, or dentures, and we do ask that you bring these items in a labeled case or a labeled bag. You label the case or the bag with your name and your date of birth. In the pre-op area, your nurse will start your IV. You will get your first dose of IV antibiotics. You will meet with the anesthesia team to discuss your anesthesia options, and you will receive the 3M nasal antiseptic swab. After the operating room, you will wake up in the recovery room. After recovery, you will be taken to a medical floor where you will stay overnight. We take a team approach for caring for you during your joint replacement. Your joint team consists of your orthopedic surgeon, registered nurses, nursing techs, lab, occupational and physical therapy, case management, and also a hospitalist, a hospital physician that acts as your primary care doctor while you're in the hospital. After surgery, your nurse will teach you to perform deep breathing and coughing exercises, which will help prevent pneumonia. You will continue to do each of these exercises every day after surgery. In addition to deep breathing and coughing, your nurse will teach you to use a breathing device called an incentive spirometer. 
This is used to expand your lungs and to get oxygen to the tissues in your body. It will help clear your lungs after receiving anesthesia and it helps to reduce fever. It will also help with nausea. It is important to use the incentive spirometer 10 times per hour while you are awake. Don't be afraid to ask your nurse for clear instructions if needed. Your safety is our highest priority. One of our biggest safety risks to joint replacement is falls. A bed or a chair alarm may be used to notify the staff if you're getting up without assistance of a team member. Your nurse and nursing techs will make rounds to assist you with your needs, help you in and out of the bed, help you to the restroom. Always use your call light whenever you need to move, get out of bed, get up from the chair or go to the restroom. Do not get up alone. Prior to your surgery, you may have heard the term non-weight bearing. You will not be able to put any weight whatsoever on your surgical foot or ankle for at least six weeks after surgery. You may ask, why non-weight bearing after surgery? Putting any weight on your operative foot or ankle can do damage to the repair that has been done. Surgical wounds heal better when they are not stressed by weight. Non-weight bearing helps reduce swelling. Keeping swelling down will help your tissues heal quickly after surgery. And non-weight bearing allows for the hardware that was placed during surgery to remain in place. After your surgery, your foot will be wrapped in a large bucky splint to protect your foot and your ankle. The bucky splint may feel heavy because you just had surgery. When you return for your follow-up appointment, your doctor may remove the splint and place you in a light cast or boot. Preventing surgical site infection. Wash your hands before and after touching any area around your surgical bandage. Do not let your pet sit near your bandage or near your surgical incision. Place clean sheets on your bed before you come to the hospital and clean your sheets often if needed. No pets in your bed during recovery. I know we all like to think our little pets are clean, but their little paws and booties can carry germs that we just don't want near your surgical site. Use a clean towel and washcloth with each shower. Wear clean clothes and keep your surgical bandage clean and dry. Pain management after surgery. You will have some pain after surgery and everyone's pain is different. Pain is a part of the process. Your surgeon will decide which type of pain medication is best for you. Let your surgeon know if your pain is not controlled with the prescribed pain medication. Preventing risk after surgery. Preventing constipation. Narcotics slows down the digestive system and can lead to constipation. Remember to drink plenty of water after surgery. You will be given a stool softener every day and you will need to continue to take a stool softener at home for a while while taking narcotics. Tell your nurse if you are having trouble going to the bathroom. Ways to decrease the risk of developing blood clots or DVT is with movement, ankle pumps, and blood thinner medications if it's prescribed by your doctor. You will discharge home as soon as you pass physical therapy and are medically stable. You and your family member will view the discharge class video. Remember to have pillows in your car to pad your heel and to elevate your foot. Nothing firm can be placed behind your heel. Upon discharge, you will be taken down in a wheelchair to the Fountain Circle entrance. If you need a walker, you will get a walker from the hospital. If you have a walker at home, please bring the walker with you and leave it in the car. It is best to use a walker or a wheelchair during your recovery period. Discharge prescriptions. For your convenience, UT Medical Center has an outpatient pharmacy available. If you want your prescriptions filled at UT Medical Center, just ask your nurse to fax it down to be processed. A family member can pick up your prescriptions on your way home. The outpatient pharmacy is located across from the cafeteria. 
Now let's talk about how to get in and out of the car safely. Prior to car entry, make sure the seat is back completely from the dashboard and the back of the seat is reclined. This enables you more leg room to swing your operative leg into the car. Turn around so you are facing away from the car and back up to the car with your walker. When you feel the back of your legs touch the seat, reach one hand back for the seat and bend at your waist to lower yourself down. Remember to keep your operative leg off the ground. Swing your operative leg in gently. Let's talk about how to take pain medication at home. Take your pain medication as prescribed, but also as needed. An example, take every six hours as needed for pain. This means to take pain medication when you start to hurt, but no sooner than the time on your prescription bottle. Let's talk about breakthrough pain. An example of breakthrough pain, if you take a pill, say at 8 a.m. and you can't take another until 2 p.m., but you start to hurt during this time, this is called breakthrough pain. Ways to manage breakthrough pain, ice therapy, apply ice to where it hurts. You can try Tylenol, and some physicians will order other medications for breakthrough pain, such as Tramadol or Vistaril. Managing your pain after surgery. A key step in pain control is to ask for pain medication when the pain first begins. Do not let your pain get out of control. Good pain control is key to a comfortable and quick recovery, so stay ahead of the pain. If your pain is between a four and a five on a pain scale, then you need to take something before your pain gets out of control. But remember, you do not have to set an alarm clock during the night if you are sleeping. If you're able to sleep, then that means your pain is under control. When to wean off of your strong pain medication. As your pain gets better, you will wean off the narcotic, meaning you will take less and less. One way to do this is to divide your dose in half. If you start taking two pills, then take one. You can also then start to spread the time out that you take your pain medication. Instead of taking your pain medicine every four hours, then take it every six hours. Then you keep spreading the time out until you don't need the pain medicine anymore. Ice therapy is very beneficial during this weaning process. As you recover at home, continue to get plenty of rest and continue with your healthy diet. Here are some common questions, such as, I feel depressed or I feel like I have the blues. This can be common. Have visitors or family members to talk to. But if you notice that that feeling of sadness continues, please reach out to your primary care doctor. Other questions is, how long is my recovery? The length of recovery is different for everyone. But within the next six months to a year, you should be well on your way to your new normal. Make sure to keep all your follow-up appointments with your orthopedic surgeon. You will have a two-week follow-up, a six-week follow-up, three months, and a six-month follow-up. And lastly, thank you for choosing UT Medical Center for your joint replacement. Please contact your orthopedic navigator at area code 865-305-8848 for any questions or concerns that you may have.